Thanks for stopping by at Twisted Art Designs. I appreciate all my subscribers and um, today we're going to work on our next installment of our um, Paper Dolls Altered Book and I'm going to show you how to make a fun waterfall flip with rotating girls. So this is what we're going to do today and I will give you the step-by-step -step instructions and then I will also link in the description below um, some videos of where I have seen and learned how to do a waterfall flip. It's basically originated with a greeting card. Okay, let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do is to uh, find five images. I like to use an odd number um, and five images will go back to back and forth really well together and layer over the top of each other. Um, I'm using sewing patterns. You can get the patterns or the images off of the internet uh, from clip art. You can get them from a calendar or a coloring book or whatever you choose to use. I like to uh, take my images when I'm using in a vintage sewing pattern and I like to um, make a photocopy of it and then put it onto cardstock so that um, I do have an image when I use the original, I'll do have another one for other um, parts of my project. I can use it again, the same image again. So I'm suggesting you make a copy and either print it onto cardstock or mat it onto a file folder or put it on some thin cardboard because you are going to want to make your girls more sturdy. So choose some images that you'd like to uh, use for this project and then we'll go ahead and get started. So in case you haven't done this before, what you want to do is um, cut out your image loosely and then um, put your image with Mod Podge down onto your cardstock or file folder or whatever it is that you're using. I chose to use some textured cardstock. It's smooth on one side and I textured on the other, so I'm going to put the girl down on the smooth side. So you just go ahead and use some Mod Podge and you put some Mod Podge down on your paper. You can also use matte gel medium, that works well, um, but either either of those, Mod Podge or matte gel medium, and you put some of that down, and then you put your image down, and then you burnish it with your hand or with a paper towel or a soft cloth or whatever. You just want to make sure that it sticks down really well, and then you're going to want to let it dry completely, and then you trim it out. If you put your image down or you cut your image down, um, cut your image out by itself and then glue it down and then you have to go back in and trim it out, you're actually cutting twice. So that's why I glue it on to the backing first and then let it dry and then when you use your scissors to fussy cut around it, you're going to get a nice, clean, crisp image and you're only going to do it one time. Next you're going to cut out five pieces of uh, cardboard. I'm using a lightweight cardboard. It's actually um, recycled packaging from a product. And you want to cut out squares that are two and a half inches squared. So here are my pieces that are two and a half inches squared. There are five of them. And they are from recycled products, so there is printing on the back. The black front side is what I'm going to use where I'd hear my dolls, and I'm going to have to put paper on the back side to cover the writing on the back from the packaging. To cover up the back side, you can use any type of paper that you'd like. It can be scrapbooking paper, it can be um, napkins, old book text. What I'm choosing to use is some crossword puzzle pages that came out of a book from the dollar store. So I'm going to use crossword paper to cover the back side of my cardboard. Next you want to take a piece of um, light cardboard and I'm recycling the back of uh, a 12 by 12 pad of scrapbooking paper. So that's the cardboard that I'm going to be using. And you want to cut a strip two and a half inches wide from your piece of uh, lightweight cardboard. Um, you could use cardstock, but it won't hold up very well doing the flip, so I would use cardboard. So cut your strip two and a half inches wide. Next, you're going to want to mark your strip of cardstock at the places where you're going to score it. 
So what you want to do is mark two inches. I'm showing two and a half, but it's not correct. You want to do the first mark at two inches and then half inch increments to make four little half inch, I'm sorry, five little half inch um, sections that are what you're going to attach your cards to. So make your marks on the top and on the bottom and then do your scoring with a scoring tool. So I've marked my spots and then you take a ruler and you put it across your page and mark, line up your dots and you take a scoring tool and you score across. And you do that all the way across until you have all of your areas scored. And there should be five half inch sections and one two inch section and then the tail on the end. Then you're going to take it and you're going to fold it. It's going to look like that. And then you're going to fold it backwards at each place that you scored. So you're going to just take it and bend it, fold it backwards. I had a spot there that needed to be scored a second time. It wasn't scored very well. There we go. And this is what you end up with. The image on, on the back is going to go face down. The black side is going to go face up. And you're going to want to put glue just along that uh, half inch strip in the first section. I'm showing it wrong on the video, so listen to what I'm saying, not what I'm showing. Um, that's why I'm kind of doing a voiceover at this point. Um, I showed gluing the, gluing the first piece all the way down, and that's not what you're supposed to do. You want to glue the piece um, just down to the half inch strip. So don't, don't, uh, I'm using art glitter glue here. You can use any kind of glue that you'd like, but I'm going to use art glitter glue. So I'm showing putting it all over the whole square. That's not what you do. I did that wrong. Um, you want to just put the glue in the um, half inch section that is scored. So it's two and a half inch size square, and the only part that should be glued is the half inch that is to the right. Then you put glue in the next section, the next scored section, you put glue again, and you put face down, pattern on the back, black on the top, you put your next piece on top of the other piece, and the only part that's going to get glued is the half inch part that is in the scored section. So you're layering pieces one over the top of each other into those scored sections. So now you glue the next section. And it started to come off, so I added some more glue. Okay, so now you put glue in the next section and put your next card. And you continue on until you have all five cards in their little half inch scored squares. And then what I like to do is to take some uh, binder clips and clamp it all together, clamp it all nice and tight, and then let it completely dry. Next you're going to want to make a strip of cardstock. And that strip is going to go underneath that first square and then it's going to wrap around to the back side you fold it over each other like this and you're going to put glue on the inside in the middle and 
that's the only place that's going to get glued flat is the place that's in the inside middle and then you slip it underneath that first square and you fold that long tail over the back and then you're going to glue those pieces together not to the piece of cardboard just to each other it has to be um, that piece of cardboard has to be able to move that's what makes it flip so all you're gluing, gluing here are just those two tails of the cardstock strip together and I just I did about three quarters inch wide and it really doesn't matter and then then when you slide that back and forth that's what makes the flip I'm being careful with it because it's still a little bit wet but see that's how it's gonna flip back and forth there we go pretty cool and then that part there um, I'm gonna leave a tail end that you can grab onto that is a tab but for now I'm gonna just leave it I'm gonna put my girls on first and decide how long of a tab the girls are going to go one on each square, overlapping each other. It's going to be really cool. And I think what I may do is glue it down and then take scissors and trim out that piece so that her just the edge of her body is on that side and the rest of the card is off to the right. I think that would look the best with them overlapping. Then you wouldn't have that square covering the girls. So I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to glue that first image into place. So on that first card I'm just along that edge putting some glue positioning my girl where I want her and gluing her into place. Be careful that no glue seeps out of the edges and then glues your flips down so you kind of have to be careful and make sure that they're all um, nice and free flowing. So now I'm going to find a place to put this next girl and she fits right along the edge of the next one so I'm not going to have to trim anything. I like how her dress is squared off kind of so I'm going to just put her right up to that edge. So I'm putting down some glue and I'm gluing in my next girl. And they're going to cascade one over the top of each other. I love that. Looks great. So cute. Such a fun project. So now that one I'm going to go in a little ways I think because if she's right out on the edge she covers the other girl too much. So I'm going to move her in a little ways. So just putting glue on the area that's going to stick to the card. Moving her in a little bit. I like that that looks good. Now I'm taking my scissors and I'm trimming out that piece of, of cardboard that sticks off the edge behind that girl. Being careful not to cut the girl below her or cut this girl's arm. I'm just trimming it out. You can put a cutting mat underneath in between the girls and use an exacto. I tried that but I preferred the scissors. So I went ahead and trimmed it out with scissors. So here's what it looks like. It makes her nice and her body come one over the other without that piece of cardboard showing. And then I'm going to put my next girl in and do the same thing. Now I'm putting my next girl in place, finding where she goes, putting some glue on, following the same steps again of 
gluing her into place where I want her to be. And then I'm going to trim after it sets, the glue sets up enough to make it sturdy enough. I'm going to take my scissors and trim that piece behind. For me, using a nice sharp pair of fine point scissors works better than the X-Acto in this particular project. I love how they look when they overlap each other without that edge. And then I'm going to put the one facing inward on the front. And I'm going to repeat that process again, gluing her down and cutting the edge. So here are my girls, all one over the top of each other. I love it. And that strap across the back is what slides across that, that uh, tail of your card piece of cardboard underneath. And that's what makes the rotating flip. So you can flip it forward and back. I love it. It turned out so cute. So now we just need to add them to the book. I'm going to add them to the next page. You could put it in the back, you could put it anywhere, but it kind of goes along with the page that we did, the layout we did on the last project. And I had my girl on the edge and I needed something underneath, and these girls look pretty cool underneath. So I think that's what I'm going to do is just um, continue on on the next page, putting my flip girls underneath. Okay, for this next layout spread, what I've decided to do, I pulled out, I removed a couple pieces of um, pages because I don't want my book to be too thick. And then I did, went ahead and Mod Podge two pages together for the next page spread. And instead of doing paint and the same way I did a background on this page, I have this really cool wood looking paper that is scrapbook paper. Um, the brand was in a pack from Bow Bunny and I just love it. So I'm going to um, just Mod Podge this paper down on this as a background. I just think it's just way cool. So that's what I'm going to do is use paper for my background and just um, put Mod Podge, cut the paper, lay it in, same thing, put paper over here and um, and then let it dry before I adhere my girls. Okay, so I covered my background with my um, scrapbook paper that looks like wood. And then I put some over this end and over this end underneath that girl so that it blends in. I can put these down on the page and it'll blend in. So now what you want to do is you want to put glue just on your strip here and glue it into place on your page. And you want to be sure that the glue is only on that band because it has to be able to move back and forth to make the girls flip. So I've put my glue down, I've got them in place where I want them to be, and now I'm just going to let that dry. I'm going to put something heavy on it, set something heavy on it and let it dry. Here we go with the finished project. There's the cool background I did with a wood scrapbooking paper. And here are my flip girls. And when you pull the tab, they flip. I love it. And I put flipping over high fashion. Isn't that cute? Way fun. And then when you close this, the one girl shows behind. I wanted it a little far out, further out, but that edge of that tab, I couldn't really do that. It would stick out of the book, so. But I still like it. Looks pretty cool, and it's fun. It flips. So I hope you enjoyed this project, and of course I'm going to put something over here. I'll probably get some images out of a magazine, um, maybe of a table and chairs, or a grandfather clock, or some furniture, or something. And I'll put something over here, but for now, there is my Flip Girl project. I hope you're enjoying making the paper doll 
altered book with me and if you um, have any questions or comments please leave them below I'm always glad to give ideas and suggestions if I have any and um, let me know if you're playing along if you're making one of these books let me know where you're located I like to know where people are from and that are watching my videos so um, just hit me up with a uh, message below to tell me where you're from and um, if you're making this altered book along with me on this project. So again, thanks for stopping by and I hope you do something fun and creative today. Art soothes the heart.